In this problem, we're going to take the scenario in problem 6.2, and then for that, uh, for the scenario in problem 6.2, we're going to find the second order corrections to the energy levels. So in order to find this, we need to first evaluate the numerator term, so let's just focus on the numerator first. So for, for the numerator term, instead of writing the mth stationary state, uh, instead of writing xi, I'm just going to write m to represent the mth stationary state. And then we have h prime, the perturbation, which is given in problem 6.2. It's just 1 half k epsilon x square. And then for the nth stationary state, I'll just use n to represent this. So let's pull the constants out first. And then we have m x square n. And in order to evaluate this term, I'm going to invoke something we used back in chapter 2. So x can actually be represented as a combination of the raising and lowering operators. So we, I can actually use this expression here to represent x. So I'm going to plug this expression in directly for x squared. So when if I take, uh, if I'm evaluating x squared, this square root term just goes away. So we have some extra constants, which I'll combine with the constants that we already have. So that's just h bar k epsilon divided by 4 m omega. And then for this inner product term, we have m. And then we have uh, the square of these operators. So we have a plus square, so that means applying the a plus operator twice, and then a plus a minus, and then a minus a plus, and then a minus square. And this will be applied to the nth stationary state. And so this is what we have so far. And then we're also going to use this result, uh, once again, also from chapter 2. So if you apply the raising operator to the nth stationary state, you get the square root of n plus 1 multiplied by the n plus 1 stationary state. So n plus 1 stationary state. And then if we apply the lower wing operator to the n stationary state, then we get the square root of n multiplied by the n minus 1 stationary state. So these are all results I'm using from chapter 2. So if you don't forget, where, if you don't remember where this comes from, you can always check back on chapter 2. So for this problem, I'm just going to use these results directly. And uh, writing down these results, they're useful because you can see now I can actually simplify this expression into something like this. So we first have uh, applying a squared to the nth stationary state. And then we have applying a plus a minus to the nth stationary state. And then we have applying a minus a plus to the nth stationary state. And then we have applying a minus squared to the nth stationary state. So now using these two formulas, we can work out uh, these four expressions individually. So let's f first start with this one. So first of all, we apply uh, a plus squared, that means applying a plus twice to the nth stationary state. So let's figure out what happens when we apply uh, a plus one time, uh, so for the first time, to the nth stationary state. So when we do that, we get square root of n plus one. So we get square root of n plus one, that's just a constant, so let's pull it outside of the inner product. And then we still have one more a plus left to apply to uh, what's uh, left over. But then after ra the raising operator, the n stationary state becomes the n plus 1 stationary state. And then we still need to apply a plus once again to this n stationary state. So this entire term just becomes square root of n plus 2 times n plus 1. And so the n plus 2 comes from the fact that we're applying the raising operator to n plus 1. So uh, in this case, we just substitute n plus 1 to n over here. So this just becomes n plus 2. And so we have m and then n plus 2. And so this is what we have for this first term. And then we apply similar reasoning to the second term. Uh, so here we uh, apply the lowering operator to uh, the n stationary state. So that first of all gives us the square root of n. And then we still have the a plus left over. And then due to the lowering operator, the n becomes an n minus 1. And then now we apply a plus to n minus 1. And so that just gives us, once again, that also gives us a constant n. So we're applying a plus now, but the n here is n plus 1, so we just substitute in n plus 1 over n minus 1 over here. So we just get square root of n minus 1 plus 1, so that's just square root of n. So we have two of these square root of n's, so we have just n. And then n minus 1 just becomes n once you apply the raising operator. So we have m, inner product between m and n. And so we do something similar over here, only this time we apply the raising operator first. So applying raising operator to n, we get square root of n plus 1 times n plus 1. So we have square root of n plus 1, and then we have m, and then lowering operator, applied to n plus 1. 
and then applying the lower weight operator to n plus 1, n minus 1, uh, n plus 1, then we just substitute in n plus 1 over here. And then once we apply the lower weight operator, this just gives us square root of n plus 1. So we have another square root of n plus 1. So we have n plus 1. And then the n plus 1, uh, you need to reduce it by 1, so that turns back into an n. So we have inner product between m and n. And then finally, moving on to this final expression, we apply a minus first to n, so that gives us square root of n. And then we have m, and then we need to apply this one more time. And what's left over is uh, n minus 1 uh, stationary state. And then we apply n mi uh, a minus again to n minus 1. And so this time we just substitute in n minus 1 over here. So this uh, becomes n minus 1, and this becomes n minus 2. So we have square root of n, n minus 1, and then we have the inner product between m and n minus 2. And so there we have it. This is how you evaluate the four expressions. So let's just add everything up. Let's just write this out in a ni nicer way. And so writing what we have derived so far, h bar k epsilon divided by 4m omega. And so for the first term, we have square root of n plus 2, n plus 1. And then here we have the inner product between m and n plus 2. And since we know that the eigenvectors uh, for the harmonic oscillator, they're all orthogonal, if m is not equal to n plus 2, then we can actually use the Kronecker delta expression to represent this inner product. Because we know that if m is not equal to n plus 2, so if the eigenvalues are different, then the inner product must be equal to 0, because they're orth orthogonal. So this is equal to 0. And if m is equal to n plus 2, then this inner product, because all the wave functions are normalized, this will be equal to 1. And so we can represent this idea using the Kronecker delta function. Uh, so I'm just using this expression to represent this inner product. And then we can do the same for all the other terms. So here we have n and then Kronecker delta m n. We have n plus 1. And then Kronecker delta m n. And the same goes for the final term. n, n minus 1, and then Kronecker m and uh, n minus 2. And so this is what we have so far. So this is for this numerator expression. So now that we've evaluated the numerator expression, we are ready to substitute it back inside this expression to get the second order corrections. So going back here for the second order corrections, first of all, notice that we've evaluated the, num uh, the numerator term, but we also need to square it. So we actually need to square this entire thing. So we have h bar squared, epsilon squared, and then we have 16 m squared omega squared, and then we also have k squared, but I don't want to express everything in terms of k. I want to go back to using h bar and omega. So we call that omega is actually defined to be equal to square root of k divided by m. And so k is actually equal to m omega squared. So k squared is actually m squared omega to the power of 4. So we actually have an m squared omega to the power of 4 here. So that's just getting rid of the k squared. I'm just going back to using omega and h bar to represent my solution. And then next up we have the summation sign. So we have summation sign where m is not equal to n. And then now we need to inc uh, incorporate this expression in the numerator. And don't forget we need to square it. And then one thing I want to note is that these two terms uh, can actually be ignored because you can see that uh, these two terms will only be non-zero if m is equal to n. But m can never be equal to n by definition of this formula. So actually these two terms will never do anything at all. So we can just ignore them. So all we have left is uh, the other two remaining terms. So we have delta n plus 2, and then n, n minus 1, delta m, n minus 2, and then we square this. And then also in the denominator, we have the difference between the energy levels. So let's just write out the energy levels for the harmonic oscillator. And you can see that some of the constants, you can cancel them out. So we have an omega here. So this becomes omega to the power of 3. But we also have an omega in up here. So that cancels out the 4. So we were just left with 1 omega. There's also an h bar, which cancels out with this. And then we have, oh, this should be a minus. And then we also have a 1 half here, which cancels out with this. And so what we have now is h bar epsilon square uh, omega and divided by 16. 
and then we have m is not equal to n. And denominator, we have n minus m, so only these two terms remain. And in the denominator, first of all, we need to square this entire term. So let's just square square these two terms first. So we have m n plus two. So technically, I could I should put a square over here, but this is either equal to zero or one. So putting a square here is actually actually doesn't affect the value. So I'll just not write down the square. And n n minus one, and then m n minus two. And then you you should also be thinking. Uh, uh, there are these cross terms, so there's also the cross term where you multiply this with this, and then you will notice that if we multiply these two expressions together, we get this, uh, we get this delta expression. This is the product between these two Kronecker delta uh, expressions, and you see that this is always equal to zero because you can see that this is equal to one only when m is equal to n plus two, but when m is equal to n plus two, this m is not equal to n minus 2, so this is 0. So we get 1 minus one, uh, 1 times 0, which is 0. And then when this is equal to 1, that means m is equal to n minus 2, but that means m is not equal to n plus 2. So when this is 1, this is also 0. So they're never simultaneously 1, so they're always, uh, this. the cross terms are always equal to 0. So we actually don't need to care about the cross terms, because they're always 0. So this is what we have, and now we can evaluate this expression. And so, evaluating the summation term, let me just write down the constants first. So for the summation term, you'll see that uh, for every single other value of m, this is equal to 0 unless m is equal to n plus 2. So for the case when m is equal to n plus 2, uh, this term is non-zero. And for that scenario, we have n plus 2, n plus 1, and in the denominator, we have n minus n plus 2, which is just equal to negative 2. And then same goes for here. Every single term is equal to 0, apart from the case m is equal to n minus 2. And then so for that case, we have n, n minus 1, multiplied by 1. And then the denominator, we have n minus, in this case, m is equal to n minus 2. So we have minus n minus 2. So that's just minus n plus 2. So this is just positive 2. And so now we can combine these two expressions together, which should be rather straightforward. So first of all, we have n squared minus n, and then here we have subtract. So we subtract n squared plus 3n plus 2. And so with some further simplification, the n squared terms, they cancel out. We have minus 3n, so minus 4n minus 2 divided by 2. And we have Let's write down the constants once again. So we're dividing this by 2, so negative 2n minus 1. And actually what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, give an extra 1 half uh, to this term inside the bracket. So this becomes an 8, and then I'm going to divide this by 2. And the reason why I'm doing this is so I'll get something that looks a bit more like the expression we usually use to express the energy levels of the harmonic oscillator. So we call for the energy of the harmonic oscillator. We usually express it like this. So I just wanted to get back the n plus 1 half. And so this is what we get in the end. And actually, let's rearrange this in a slightly nicer way. So we have negative epsilon over 8, and then n plus 1 half, and then h bar omega. And you'll see that this term here is precisely the nth energy level. And you can see that this is, uh, we're basically done. This is the result. This is the answer. And if you'll compare this back to uh, the result in problem 6.2, recall in problem 6.2 we actually saw for the exact uh, value of the energy levels. And we also expressed our exact solution in terms of a power series uh, of epsilon. And you'll see that this corresponds exactly to the second order term in that power series. And so once again you see that perturbation theory is actually pretty successful in yielding approximate uh, results uh, of the energy levels.